Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM Power Systems in the UK. This is a look at the new power systems as we now have the whole range of servers released, but we're going to present them in infographic style. There's a lot of information in here and I'm going to summarize it a little bit and encourage you to go to a web article where you can see the full size images and read them at your ledger and you'll also be able to download the PowerPoint version for your own use. If you need more information than is presented here, then I recommend you look for the Power 10 Red Books. I was hoping to condense everything down to two or three pages, but I couldn't. There's too much good information that I wanted to share. So this is what I've ended up with. First of all, we have one sheet about the Power 10, the processor itself, very impressive CPU. Then we have two covering the Power 10 infrastructure. Now a lot of this has come over from Power 8 and Power 9, but if I miss some of these things out, people say, whoa, you didn't mention Power HA. Is that gone? Is that dead? Tell me more. And the answer is no, no, no. There's a lot of stuff out here and it's going to carry on into Power 10. Then we look at the scale out. The scale out though is a little bit more complicated than you might originally think. We actually have six different models that form the scale out models. So there's one sheet that tells you what the differences are, then there's another sheet on the S1024 and the S1022, and there's the matching L models, which are much the same. And then there's also the smaller S1014 and the S1022S models will cover what's unique about those two. Then we have the big guys, the enterprise guys. So we have enterprise mid-range, the 1050, and the enterprise E1080 that was the first model to ship in 2021. Right then, we'll start off with the Power 10 chip itself. As you can see over here, we can have up to 15 cores up from 12 in the Power 9 machines. We have the cache sizes in here, which are pretty large when you start adding them up. If you look at the big machine, it has nearly two gigabytes of cache inside the processor. So it doesn't even need to get to memory to actually do the operations. We have some accelerators in here, cryptographics and compression. That's as you would expect. We also have MMA for AI and machine learning. Matrix maths acceleration. Um, it's actually new instructions for the main processor cores. We also encrypt memory. And that's actually using this controller on the memory card. If we make the CPUs go faster, we got to get them to talk faster. So that's greatly improved with the SMP fabric across the machine. You can see there's actually eight direct connections that we can have between this Power 10 chip and all the others in the computer. The size of memory is going up, the scale out and mid range are doubling, but we're using these things called open memory interface memory cards, which have a much higher performance than the regular DDIM sort of memory and higher reliability as well. Moving to PCIe Gen 5 adapters, that's twice as fast as the Gen 4. Just a few little facts in here. How are we getting this performance? Well, if you look at the size in terms of the number of devices here on a processor chip, then from Power 9, which is 8, we've gone to 18. So that's an awful lot of extra devices. Now, we used to say transistors, but then somebody pointed out, well, some of them are actually capacitors and, and diodes and things, so we now call them devices. The actual uh, width of a, uh, a line between the various transistors has gone down again. We're down at 7 nanometers. Just sort of reference, a human hair is 10,000 nanometers. Meters. This is how big they are now, and you see they're gradually shrinking over the generation. For my own amusement, are the chips getting bigger or smaller? Well, the number of devices goes up, but the size of the device goes down, so it sort of balance out. The Power 10 is a bit smaller than a Power 9 chip. And we move on to Power 10 infrastructure. We can see on the left and here the small, medium, and large. We call them scale out, mid range, and enterprise. Each one of these boxes here could be an hour's lecture, but we'll try and do it a lot quicker than that. Why do people like Power 10 computers? Well, mission critical. First of all, they're big and they're fast, and secondly, because they're very, very reliable. That allows you to run your big workloads safely without having lots of downtime. And that mission critical that we build into the big ones actually works on the smaller machines as well. They're very fast for their price and reliable too. On the automation side, we use PowerVC, which is an extension to the OpenStack software that you can get that allows you to roll out virtual machines very, very quickly and control them cookie cutter stuff. We've also invested in something called Ansible, it's from Red Hat, for our DevOps. That's allowing you to automate tasks on your virtual machines once they've been rolled out and allows you to cut down on your systems management and increase your consistency in your computer room. 
High security built into the Power 10 processor, as you'd expect from IBM, both the cores and encryption engines. Then we also have a package called Power SC. It's a toolbox of a whole bunch of tools in here that can help you increase the security and to make sure that you can prove compliance to the highest security in your computer room. Application modernization. This is using Red Hat and OpenShift allows you to coexist your big uh, databases and workloads along with an OpenShift on the same machine and that allows you to have containerized workloads talking to the databases directly and that gives you agile programming teams with lots of fast OpenShift rollout of your updates. We also have uh, greener technology. Broadly speaking, each generation uses uh, the same or slightly less electrical power and of course they're much faster so that means it's more efficient computing what we call more bangs per watt for each generation so you need fewer servers to do the same job we also had questions from customers about sustainability and, and we're all amazed how good ibm is actually at this we have an uh, environmental impact as a high design item in manufacturing computing and recycling so we produce less waste and so we've got a whole hours lectures on this about how IBM is doing it even keep keeping down the amount of packaging we sent you with each computer for investment protection if you invest now in power 10 then you can carry a lot of that into your power 11 computers in the future same goes for 9 to 10 so that if you have capacity and entitlements you can move those from one generation to the next generation we also have this thing called power enterprise pools that allow you to buy a machine say half activates it and the rest of it so you can activate on a minute by minute basis to hit the peaks in workloads that you can't predict and you certainly don't want to run out of compute power we have power systems virtual server which is in ibm cloud that can give you access to power 9 and power 10 computers in a very simple way i also have a series on youtube about getting access to AX costs you down to three or four euro dollar pounds a day that's less than you pay for a cup of coffee there we go i hope you didn't blink because you're now part two of our infrastructure first one up here is oracle certified well it's not certified to the hardware it's actually to the operating system level in our case aix and all the current aix versions 7 1 2 and 3 I uh, have available Oracle 12 to Oracle 19, which was the last one at the time I made this video. It turns out that if you look at that AX and Oracle combination, most of the biggest Oracle databases in terms of CPU count and data side are actually running AIX Oracle. Also, with the new rollout of the scale out, the S1014 and the S1022S qualify for the reduced priced Oracle standard edition license. We have dynamic LPAR, so we can add and remove CPU cores on the fly, add and remove memory on the fly, and the adapters. All for all three operating systems supported by power computers. So that's AIX and IBM IR have that code built in. For Linux, you have to add a few special RPMs from IBM. Once you've done that, you also have live partition mobility if you're using the virtual I.O. server technology, which has been around for like 10 years. Um, and if we can jump a virtual machine between servers and across three generations of servers. We have with AIX something called memory expansion, a favorite technology of mine. This allows us to compress memory in the computer. We end up with more effective memory and that helps with the price of memory being quite high as it is if you're buying terabytes. Advanced features, we have simplified remote restart with power vc so if a virtual machine fails we can rebuild the logical partition on a different machine and restart it and get the service run already mentioned that a particular lpar or virtual machine can run in three modes on power 10 it can pretend to be power 8 or 9 or running native power 10 mode mention the mma before for in core aix inferencing and machine learning on the same machine as where you properly hold the bulk of your big data uh, nj mon well that's my favorite performance tool because i I write it uh, that has been approved for power 10 and one more little thing the hypervisor mirroring is in memory was just for the big machines now it's across the entire range ibm i is a super efficient whole stack operating system very popular with the scale out models quite often you buy a small machine that will run the accounts or the customer management or the website although some customers which are much larger scale uh, actually put all their ibm i into uh, E1080s for large numbers of virtual machines. 
for the power HA, or as the older guys like me call it HACMP, that requires some sort of shared disk technology but allows quick automatic failover or manual takeover between servers and restarting a service with minimum downtime. This allows you to move a workload to a different machine if you want to do, for example, upgrade your production machine. It also comes with Virtual Machine Recovery Manager to give you more options. Next one's a bit of a funny one. I copied the marketing messages and cut it right down so it could fit in here. And they think the key messages with our new Powerton machines are designed to improve scale, performance, and security while delivering class-leading reliability. So it's a fast response to protect the data from core to cloud, streamlining insights for AI and streamlining automation and maximum res. Funny enough, I can actually agree with that. And finally, the operating systems that we're supporting with Power10. I'm not going to read that list. You can pause it and have a look. It's going to change over time as this video gets older. IBM does, though, have IBM Lab Services. Great team of guys and gals that can come and help you upgrade. Don't forget, we can run in Power8 mode. If you're running Power7, well, you really need to upgrade by now because your machines are getting older. So let's move to the scale-out model. You think the smallest in the range will be the easiest, but it's not because there's six different options with the scale-out model. First note, some are 4U in a 19-inch rack and some are 2U in a 19-inch rack. Of course, you can't get quite as much into a 2U. You'll notice these models are 4, 4 and 4. This is because they're the 4U and these ones are the matching 2U models. I've renamed them here Extra Large, Large, Medium and Small. Gives you an idea of the config size. So if you want the maximum of CPU cores, it's here. If you want the maximum amount of memory, it's here. And then these are the PCI slots and the internal storage. Now, all these facts are repeated on the next four slides, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail. You'll notice here it says 8 terabytes, but there's a little green star with 2 terabytes. That's because we're starting off with the smaller memory sizes, and on November the 18th, you'll be able to order the bigger memory. Of course, in the large, lower numbers of CPU and lower numbers of memory. Down in here, we got quite small machines, so lower numbers of CPU again, we need two terabytes, and down here, half or one terabyte of memory. This one has few CPUs, not much memory, but still has a lot of disks in here. Notice here with the PCI slots, it says it's 10, but it's eight plus two. Down in here, it says eight Gen 5s and two Gen 4s. That's how to work out what's going on. Now, what's this going on in here about Linux? Well, we have an S1024 and an L1024. This one is for running Linux. I think it would be at a lower price. But IBM was quite generous realizing that some workloads will only run on AIX or IBM I, so you're allowed to run 25% of the cores running AIX or IBM or combined 25%, even though it's classified as a Linux machine. Configuration details are exactly the same for the S and the L model. Hopefully that will let you decide which ones you want, and now let's go into the main details of each of these machines. I'll be covering the S1024 and the L24 together, same for these two over here. So here's the first scale out a fact sheet. This is for the S1024 and the L1024. I already said that the L1024 is exactly the same config. It's meant to be running Linux, but you are allowed that 25% of the cores running AIX or IBM I. Up here is the MTAM, machine type model. The business partners and IBMers have to learn that from your ordering uh, configurations. When I get to the other scale out servers, I'll just highlight the differences rather than going through the full details that I will now. Performance is key for buying a new server. Why would you buy a slower new server? It's up by 128% means we're going 128% faster. So if the Power 9 machine was doing 100 miles an hour, now with Power 10 doing 228 miles an hour. The RPF rating is 1332. Three, Highlighting this is two times faster. I've got these graphs to scale to give you a flavor of what a big jump this is. Memory bandwidth, this is primarily due to the OMI memory, these new cards that we're using. They come in various sizes. The ones in gray in here are available from November the 18th, 2022. There's overall, there's uh, 32 DIMM slots or DDIMM slots available if you've got all the processors installed. The fabric is how we talk between the Power 10 chips. And we can have either have one socket or two sockets inside the machine. And it's a one hop design. So every Power 10 talks directly to every other Power 10 chip in the server. 
that means we have one or two sockets which means two or four power 10 chips and we can upgrade from one socket to two sockets if that's allowed in fact the only model that you can do that with here is the 12 core model or single socket you can upgrade it to a 24 core server by activating and putting the uh, chips in for the second socket note that this 12 cores is actually made out of two six core chips if you want 32 or 48 then you have to have the two sockets the one socket versions of these is not available so these are the only numbers of cpus you can have of course you can buy the machine with all these cores in them and only activate a lesser number of cores and activate them later on perhaps notice the gigahertz rating the, don't get wound up about this the top gun will probably generate a bit more heat so it's clocked down a tiny fraction but this is only two and a half percent i mean you barely notice that going on in real life to control your machine you have to use a hmc it'll be the cr1 model or the cr2 model or the virtual hmc it will have to be running hmc version 10 software that will support the power 8 power 9 or power 10 servers not the power 7 it will just get completely ignored by the hmc the hmc is going to talk to the ebmc that's the new service processor being used in the scale out model there's no upgrades from power 9 to power 10 you can move over compatible adapters you can remove over the remote sas drawers and the remote io drawers double check though that those adapters are supported in power 10. on the io adapter side we are now moving up to Gen 5, Generation 5 of PCIe. If you put a Gen 4 adapter in a Gen 5 slot, it will just clock itself down to match the adapter. Same with Gen 3. There are 10 slots in here. These are the various combinations. Four slots can run at the Gen 5 at 8 channels or Gen 4 at 16. Four of them can be run at Gen 5 with 8 channels and two of them are Gen 4 at 8 channels. We can take these adapters in and out uh, live, but we have to follow the concurrent maintenance processes driven by the HMC. On the remote I.O. draw side, we can have two whole remote I.O. drawers like the Power9 servers. Internal storage, no brown spinning disks, they're gone. So we got NVMe attached SSDs, each assignable to any virtual machine or VIO server individually the sizes of our ssds is uh, 0.8 1.6 3.2 and 6.4 terabytes giving you a total if you take the 16 of the large ones 102 terabytes now given the fact that 16 of these drives would easily do millions of ios per second you can see why we've moved away from the brand spinning discs to run those eme disk bays at the front of the machine you can see them in the picture you, for the first eight NVMe SSDs, you'll have to use one PCI slot at the back of the machine. If you want 9 to 16 SSDs, you'll also have to have another PCIe adapter. External storage, we got uh, SAS I.O. draw, uh, like Power 9. In addition to the higher performance and configuration, we actually also want lower prices, don't we? So if you configure up a nice big Power 9 server the s924 and find out its rperf rating and then you match that with a power 10 s1024 you'll find that the power 10 machine will be significantly less expensive from experiments that i've done it's like 20 to 25 percent less expenses but it depends on your actual configurations doing like for like and particularly uh, large memory in the terabyte ranges uh, can actually greatly affect the price we also have sustainability this is using less electricity over the previous generation it's going to be about 30 percent less energy it's also got the titanium power supplies which are the new standard coming out so that they're efficient over a greater range of the number of watts being drawn into the computer. So here's the next scale out, it's the S1014. We jump from the biggest in the range to the smallest in the range. The relative performance is only up 37%. Our point will be that the prices are down, but that's still useful. Uh, minimum amount of uh, memory, although a terabyte is still quite a lot of memory. 
Um, it's only got one power 10 chip in it, so it's a zero hop design. There's nowhere else to jump to. And we've got uh, two uh, different configurations, uh, four cores, uh, eight cores in the machine, just a single socket. It can be in a tower format. This is the only one you could do this. This will allow you to go into an office or a shop or a warehouse, for example, if you only have a dedicated uh, application to be running. That's particularly good for IBM i. It doesn't need a lot of compute power. And um, if you also want to run an Oracle Standard Edition, this is a good machine to start off with. Uh, these are the same, uh, slightly less adapters in it because we've only got one chip to run the adapter slots. All the disks are still there. And as I said, lower prices are the main point of this server. Here's the S1022 or L1022. Again, this is the Linux version, although we can run 25% of the cores running AIX and or IBM I. You'll see the performance is down from the 4U machine. That's primarily because we've only got 40 cores available and it's running less CPU cores because it's difficult to get the heat out of the machine because it's only 2U. The relative performance number is up 125 percent as a respectable amount to 1024 which is a spooky number really it doesn't support the biggest omi memory cards so the size of the memory is down a bit we can still have one or two sockets two or four power nine cpus with these combinations in same gigahertz rating as the 4u machine this is the same this is the same in for the Gen 5 PCIe. The storage is the same, except there's only eight NVMe slots, and we're going to still win out with the uh, lower list prices and higher sustainability with less electrical power use. And finally, we have the S1022S. The S, I think, it's for small. The R perf ratings is up a bit, 22%. Again, we're probably looking at the list prices are going to be particularly uh, cost effective similar arguments with the not having the biggest 4u memory cards and here we got a new thing we have the power 10 chip and this little switch in it this switch is for the pcie connections to do io so we still have good numbers of the pcie adapters inside the machine even though we've got lower numbers of power 10 cpus we can buy it in a four core chip as a single socket or you can buy it as an eight core chip as a single socket or you could have two of those double socket to get to 16 cpus as a maximum everything else is much the same as the previous model now a complete change in tech we're going to the enterprise machines this is the mid-range machine the e1050 completely different ball game instead of having lots of different options like we have with the scale out we just have one design but we can leave out some components to make a smaller configuration a couple of big important things with this machine is if you take the lid off the machine you'll find it's absolutely full in the scale out there's quite a lot of space in there there's air ducts to keep the air flowing across in the e1050 it's just full of cards and heat sinks as you go from the front to the back of the machine it means that the front of the machine is whopping great big fans push Pushing the air through it at high volume to make sure we're keeping the machine nice and cool. Another big feature is the performance. The maximum R purpose is 2688 or 2.3 times the power. Again, I've got this graph to scale. You can see the jump in performance. In my 30 years at IBM and 10 years before that, I've never seen a new computer rain take a jump like that. And it's all in a 4U package. It is quite a long computer. You have to be careful with that if you haven't seen the Power 9 machine. It's using the same OMI memory that we're using in the entire range. The trick here is 4U, so you can take the bigger memory cards when they're available November the 18th. And it's got 64 of these differential DIMMs slots inside the machine. That's how it doubles the memory. The scale out takes 8 terabytes. Here it's going up to 16 terabytes when the big cards come out. We'll skip this diagram in the middle. Big factor in here, 96 CPU cores is the top size of the machine for high performance. Above that, you can see that we have dual chip sockets like this diagram. There's four dual chip sockets with two power 10 
processors in each. Those uh, chips can have 12 cores, 9 cores or 6 cores in them. And so if you have the different chips and the different number of sockets, you can see these are all the numbers of variations you can have with the number of CPU cores. You can buy it with two sockets and then add a third socket later on. That will take downtime. Your CE will be doing that for you. Uh, and then you can upgrade it to four sockets. Alternatively, you could buy it with the four sockets all in there and only activate the ones you need. That will give you the nice feature that you can activate those extra cores uh, live without taking the machine down. It just swings and roundabouts, you'll have to make up your own mind. Down here we can see it's a one hop design still, even with the four sockets. Every Power 10 chip has a direct connection to all the other Power 10 chips. There's a little cable in there between the two. This makes it a very efficient design for SMP. Also in this diagram, you can't quite see it perhaps, but you have uh, connectors to all the NVMe drives and you have connectors from every one of the chips to a bank of memory inside this machine. We've seen the details down here before, the HMC, CR1 or 2, or the virtual HMC. We got, uh, that will have to be running version 10 of the HMC software and that will support power 8, 9 or 10, not power 7. The E1050 has the new BMC service processor, like the scale out machines. No upgrades from Power 9, but you can move compatible adapters, particularly the newer adapters. Over here, we're looking at the storage. We have 10 NVMe SSDs. You can actually see those in the picture. There's two rows of five SSDs. These are individually assignable to a virtual machines or your VIO servers. Classic example was you have four of these, two for each of your VIO servers, and then you'd mirror them up to 6.4 terabytes. So 10 of those, that's probably 64 terabytes internal storage. We do have the external storage if you want it with a remote SAS IO draw, but given the performance in millions of IO ops per second that you can achieve with NVMe SSD, outside spinning disk particularly it doesn't seem like a very bright idea okay you could have some SSDs in your IO draw we flip over here to the PCIe adapters we have a hot swap blind swap cassettes so the adapters go in a little box that you can slide out in and out of the back of the machine for higher reliability the squeezed in 11 PCI slots so that's one up on the scale out machine also have like power 9 the IO draws for more adapters if you really need it the trend in the industry is to have low Lower numbers of higher speed adapters and finally we come with to the high-end machine the e1080 this has been out since september 2021 you may have come across it already and this has got big everything first of all performance 8000 r puffs how does it actually manage to do that well it's not just one draw like this it's actually four draws like this and a small controller as well. The space in there allows the ramp up to the enormous numbers of CPU in the computer, 240. And we can see there's a nearly 60% jump in performance over the processors that came before it. It's the same 64 terabytes as we had in Power 9. Nobody's really asked to have more than that. I'm not sure if anybody could afford it, to be honest, because it's quite expensive. We also, in these four draws, have a two-hop design. So we have a one-hop between all the Power 10 processors in the same draw. And then a one hop between the say the first chip and the one immediately above it and the one above that and the one above that if you want to go further across the computer then it's a two hop you have to go along a draw and then up or up and then along a draw but there's multiple paths so if one path gets busy you can start using a different path to get to your destination and this is used to bring uh, memory cache lines across the machine or talk to your IO adapters in the e1050 we have these cassettes this is a little picture of one that's actually in the e1080 the adapter is in this cassette we can pull down the little handle and pop it out all under the control of hmc processors uh, that allows us to have in the back of every one of the drawers, or the four drawers, it has eight Gen 5 adapters, that giving us 32 adapters in total if you have all four kecks. You could have a machine with less than the four kecks. Already covered the HMC, that's the same as before. Although in this case, we have the FSP that we've had for quite a while now, and it's a dual FSP, so we didn't change that with the Power 10 coming out. Um, in Power 11, maybe we'll go to the new eBMC, and we do extra tests working in a dual service processor mode. Now storage, we have uh, four NVMe SSDs per draw, so that's 16 in total. That should be enough to 
boot and run your VRL servers and maybe have a lot more data in there as well. We have the external storage. This is coming over from uh, Power9 for the SAS drawers. And we also have remote IO drawers for your adapters to go into too. So in each drawer we have four processors and then we have four kecks. So that's 16 processors in the whole large configuration machine. This machine is the one that takes these 15 core chips for power 10 chips. Um, and then you have four of those in a drawer. So that's four times 15. And then you have four drawers. So that's four times that to get to the, the maximum of 240 power 10 CPU cores. And that's running at four gigahertz. So what was slightly less cores in actually runs slightly over that to 4.15 gigahertz slightly less uh, temperature in the machine so we can crank it up a little bit higher or you can go down to the 10 cores per chip and you then top out at 160 cores like before you could add draws to the machine as your requirements grow that will take an outage alternatively you buy it with all the cores in there and only activate the ones you need and then you can activate them later without interrupting your service massive bangs per buck on this machine the scaling up allows far better sharing of resources we can find spare compute power from some other workload that isn't peaking at the same time and borrow the cpus across the machine in this infographic i try to highlight the performance is up the technology definitely up the prices are down compared to power 9 and sustainability is good as well using less electricity to do the same number of transactions and certainly increased management flexibility we looked at that in the infrastructure slide finally a quick reminder we have small medium and large we tend to call them scale out mid-range and enterprise the scale out as we know is a little bit more complicated because we're trying to have a really powerful machine with 48 cpus in it and yet have machines with just four cpus and a sensible memory and io configurations i'm putting these slides up on a article on ibm.com i'll give you a link in the youtube descriptions so you can view the slides without having to play them in a video and download the powerpoint if you've enjoyed or learned something during this video give us a thumbs up it gives me a good excuse with my manager to do some more videos thanks for watching